Welcome to Academy Answers Podcast, a show dedicated to inspiring and providing actionable advice on life, business, happiness, success, and reaching your full potential. Have you ever felt frustrated that life isn't working out the way you expected? Have you been searching for answers without success? You've come to the right place. Each week, we bring you perspectives, ideas, and actionable content. We share with you proven and time-tested step-by-step strategies to help you live the life you deserve and make your dreams a reality. From health to finances to relationships to business, we provide the insights and strategies you need to reach your full potential. So buckle up and plug in because Academy Answers Podcast is about to take you to a new level of personal success. Morning, guys. How are you doing this morning? My name is Lowen Motivator Car. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Academy Answers Podcast where we discuss happiness, success, and full potential. And we believe that that is the epitome of all goals. We believe that that is what life is about. I think it was Rick Marr who said that if you can become good then you can become better and if you can become better you can become your best and if you can become your best you can be happy and if you can't be happy then what else is there thank you guys for joining me today and today uh, I want to go a little bit into a concept that I've spoken of all the time and through my work and my observation in this space I like to recognize patterns and I I I do spend the time to do it like we all have our inclinations and our um, talents and our interests and this is my interest I am passionate about this beyond interest above interest higher level it's passion I'm passionate about this and naturally I spend a lot of time following this thing and it's not that I'm special or I'm you know more than anybody else or this is some high satirical um, God-given um, concept yes it is God-given it was put into me but I had to take the time out to cultivate it and it is the same way that people who are interested in a sporting activity people who are whether it be basketball baseball it's the same way that they can tell you the history they can make the analysis they can tell you what this guy is supposed to do just the same as an environmentalist can tell you what happened with that leaf that tree that what that water body because they spend the time to do it and there has to be a level of respect and admiration or kind of reverence for want of a better word to the person who invested the time in an area and a lot of time people get into conversations way outside of the scope of their work of of doing any in-depth work at all they spout up spout opinions and those who have done the work and the research in that area um are challenged on stuff challenged by people on issues that you know whoever is proposing that challenge haven't even done anything and that is almost a debate that personally I'm not willing to get into I I, am willing to talk in depth on a subject for extended period of time with someone who has spent the time to actually research and to learn I don't think there must there's much to be learned from opinion so if you have an opinion i'll recognize and as much as i can i'll recognize and very quickly that it's an opinion 
and the debate will be short-lived. I'll be out, I'll be okay, we agree to disagree, I get your opinion, I'm done. I am not going to waste my time back and forth with the opinion arguments. I don't have time for that. I'm not saying you shouldn't or you can't, that is okay. If you have time, I don't have time for that because I spend my time trying to learn and progress. And if I can't learn anything, if, 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 if I'm not in the business, if I want to be entertained, I know what my favorite types of entertainments are. I'm not in the business of uh, back and forth in based on opinions. I will listen, I will back and forth because I know that there's something to be learned with someone who has actually taken the time out, out to do it, to learn the stuff and to study. And I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but I wanted to make that clear. But the, the point I'm trying to make is debt beyond surface is the way of the enlightened person. People who string their thoughts together beyond just today are the basics are the people who I can relate to so I'll tell you this quick story I'll bring my point to uh, so you can be clear about what where I'm trying to go with this we had this project some time ago back when I was in Jamaica with this um, telecommunications company who were expanding their reach into um, many other communities out in the rural areas. So most of the, the bigger um, cable TV and telephone was concentrated in the corporate areas. So they were expanding their reach and we got the contract too. They bought this local um, cable company that was in another city and we got the contract to bring out the correspondence to the customers of the, the old company that was acquired uh, to let them know of the new changes and to inform them of how they will go forward. We went into this beautiful community in Montego Bay. I won't say the name because I, I, I'm not very sure of the name and I don't want to, to get it all crazy and so you won't have to quote me on the name of the community. But that's not important. There are some really nice communities in Montego Bay. You should go and check it out sometimes. Beautiful. So, in fact, the whole city of Montego Bay is a very beautiful city. It's on that north coast of Jamaica. The water is blue and beautiful. The beaches are beautiful. There are fabulous resorts all over. Just everywhere. Everywhere it's just beautiful. And we entered this community and I suddenly because I had like six guys with me what we usually usually do we would drop them off at specific points they would have their pack of um, correspondence mails whatever it was and they would take it to the different homes there's an address on it they'll take it to the different homes leave it in the letterbox leave it with, for the, the clients the customers residents whatever We went into this community, we drove up, entered, and it. I now, I wasn't totally familiar with the area, so now looking at the area, I realized that, look, this area looked like a big area, so what we should do, like it's a, the, in, in terms of the, the space, the size um, community it was, and it was almost evening, so it dawned on me that maybe starting this size community wouldn't be the best thing to do at this time of the evening i might as well go to a smaller community that we could just get done instead of doing a part of this and coming back here tomorrow to do it a part of it again so as we enter the community there was this big long stretch where you could all houses and not the road was open and paved and then there was also uh 
right turn not so big of a road not the main road you could see that it's not the main road and my brother said to me that we could well after i told them what the plan was they said like yeah that's a good plan and my brother said to me that we should this looked like the road that we could go all the way out and we would end up on the other side and we could get out of the development because the roadway we just came on is heavy with traffic going back into the, 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 the towns, the city center. So naturally, it, the road does look like the main road that could take us somewhere. And when you look on the horizon, look like the houses would have um, ended and then you could go out on the other side. So we went down this road. Really big community. Down the road for maybe five to ten minutes, somewhere there. And all the cars were going that way. Houses everywhere. Nice to look at the scene. I like to look at houses. So we're looking. Cars are going that way. Cars are coming. A lot of activity on that road. And when we got all the way down to the end, we realized that it was a dead end road. We couldn't get out from there. We couldn't get to the other side from there. It didn't take us out of the community. We had to turn around, come all the way up back, and we're like, okay, let's try this turn. And we took the right turn, and it so happened that it took us out of the community circumvent that traffic and took us into us into the desired community which was a smaller community that we were expecting or theorizing that we would get to why am i telling you the story the point i'm making is that many times the road we take the the, the normal the the road of the masses the one that look big open paved while it looks like it is the one because everybody is on it and it is popular and it is what everybody's doing it is usually the dead end road it is usually the road that in the end we're gonna find out that it's not gonna take us to our destination and the only difference is I had to drive all the way to the end of that road to realize what was happening. But in life, we have the privilege of assessing the journey by looking at others, by listening to the teachings of others, by um, getting the information from others, by working the mats ourselves. We have that privilege to do it before we go all the way down the road. Instead of going there and realizing that it's a dead end road. Takes me back to my point. There's a tendency in the human experience for us to half think and hope for the best or lazy, for want of a better word, lazy think ourselves or take the lazy, unplanned way out. Wing it, in other words. As talking to uh, hairdresser one day and she was explaining to me how you know 
all the plans that she had for her life. We were, I was trying to set up a corporation for her. And she was explaining to me all the plans that she had for her life and business. And I was asking her what are her income goals. She said, well, she don't really have income goals. She just work hard every day. <laughs> I was like, well, if you work hard every day, how much money is the most amount of money you have ever made in a day? And she gave me some figure. Let's say $1,000 for argument's sake. So I'm asking her, is it possible for you to work hard every day or work harder and make five times that amount? And she said, no, maybe double time that amount. So I asked her, is double time that amount enough to get you to where you're planning to get to in life? She's not sure. She babbled a little bit and, you know, kind of um, didn't answer the question and sidetracked and then she she moved on to another subject this is common it's very common you have people who buy homes contribute to their pension didn't calculate that by the time they are finished paying off this 35 years mortgage they probably would have been they probably would have retired before the mortgage is finished and who knows if there will be any equity in the house in 25 30 years what if the market crashes you have people who buy cars get themselves into lease arrangements or whatever it is and get themselves into expenses that is above and beyond what they earn and they totally don't have any plan as to how it's gonna work so we 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 do the thing and then we figure out the means to sustain the things we do people who work jobs and hope to get to the highest level in the job and haven't figured out what they want for their lives after they get to the highest level in the job they hope they will have enough time for their family they hope they will have enough money to do the things they want to do or they just figuring it out as they go by and I, I think that is where we want to actually come to idea that we surface think a lot and just hope to figure it out as life unfolds look I'm the first guy to tell you that there's no crystal ball I'm the first to admit that you will not be able to say what life is going to turn out to be. Nobody knows. You don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't know what next year, next month. No one knows. But holding all conditions constant. Let's say it plays out within the parameters of how you expect it to play out you are able to be healthy and work on for the next 20 years 30 years you are able to live where you live you are able to um continue on with the things that you are doing now how will life look for you will the destination that you end up at be a destination that you ended up at by default or will it be one that you ended up at by design will it be where you want to be and who 
you think is responsible to make it a place that you want it to be? Do you think you have control over that? Or are you just hoping it ends up or turns out to be a mess? Not everybody want to think a hundred feet down hypothetically speaking or figuratively speaking but at least I beg you to get off the surface start to say hey but what if what if my husband dies what if my wife dies what if um, the I get fired from my job. What if when I'm ready to sell this house, the market is in a recession? What can I do to cover a few downsides? What can I do to set a couple fail-safe plans in place? What do I have to hold up as a support system? What can I fall back on? What is it that I have control of that I could leverage? What are the skills I need to build just in case? This morning, all I'm asking you is to go one step down, one level down from the surface and look at just a few, not 10,000 and get you into overthink look into a few just in case scenarios and I hate to end on a negative note but there is this researchers have shown that every person will see some form of crisis in their lives within a seven year period one guy even put it more dramatically. He said that in life, you're either in a problem, just getting out of a problem, or heading to a problem. Look, there is no pushy way to go through life. The first person to fail is the person who approach life 